Dear friends, Welcome back to yet another video on Everything you wanted to know about fully fashion knitting. In the last video, we discussed how to get to know where the sleeve will join the main body if the armhole measurement is provided. In this video, we will discuss how to determine the point where the sleeve will join the main body when armhole measurement is not given but only sleeve width is given. Though this will be a rare case that you are not provided with the armhole measurement and only sleeve width is provided but we shall be prepared for any kind of eventuality. And once we know how to calculate armhole measurement with sleeve width, we will try to check mathematically if the measurements of armhole and sleeve width complement each other or not. Coming back to our main topic of today, we already know how to draw the extended sleeve as per the given measurements and draw the sleeve rib box. For those who are watching this series of video for the first time, are advised to watch the Sweater Geometry 2 video to understand this. Preferably I would suggest to watch all three previous videos and then watch this one. Once we have the extended line ready and we know the sleeve width, we draw a perpendicular on the sleeve line which is equal to the sleeve width. We move this line to and fro till the lower point of this line touches the chest line. The point where this perpendicular joins the chest line is the point where the sleeve will join the main body. Now to calculate the armhole measurement and the armhole depth measurement. We must calculate the measurement between the HPS point and the point where the sleeve will join the main body. Represented by AF as per illustration, this measurement is the sum of line AE and line EF. Here it is important to note that the angle of the shoulder which is between G H, and C. As well as the angle of the sleeve slope which is the angle between I, C, and D. And the angle between D, A, and E. All three angles will be 20 degrees, as per simple rules of geometry. Therefore, the line AE will be equal to DA. That is sleeve width, and is equal to 21 centimeters. Divided by the value of cos of 20 degrees which is equal to zero. 939693 21 divided by 0.939693 will result in 22.34 cm. Similarly, the line between E and F will be half chest minus half neck width. Divided by the tan value of 20 degrees which is 0 0.36397. Half chest minus half neck width is 29 minus 8. 75 and is equal to 20.25. 20.25 multiplied by 0 0.36397 equals 7.37 centimeters. The distance between the point where the sleeve will join the main body will be 22.34 plus 7.37 equals 29.710 or 29.7. The armhole drop is simple to calculate which will be 29.7 minus the shoulder drop that is 4.3. Therefore the armhole drop is 29.7 minus 4.9 and is equal to 24.8. To calculate the armhole, we would use the Pythagoras theorem and take a square root of the sum of the square of half chest minus half shoulder and the square of armhole depth. Half chest minus half shoulder is 29 minus 22.5 and is equal to 6.5 and armhole depth is 24.8. The square of 24.8 equals 615.04. And square of 6.5 is equal to 42.25. The square root of the added value of these 657.54 is 25.64. Therefore, the armhole length will be 25.6. The measurement given by the buyer is 25 and not 25.6. Similarly, if you calculate armhole measurement, for all sizes you will see the difference in the given. Or asked for measurement for the armhole is 23.75, 24.5, 25.6, 27, and 28.25 respectively. 
whereas the given measurement for the armhole is 23, 24, 25, 26.25 and 27.5. The difference in the asked for measurement for armhole is 0 0.75, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.75 and 0 0.75 centimeters. It is not that a sleeve with 21 arm width will not fit in the armhole with a measurement of 25 and not 25.6. It is very much possible to join the sleeve with smaller armhole width. But if the armhole size is smaller, then what is required for a particular arm width? The sleeve will still be joined in the armhole so formed by the front and the back, but will have a ballooning effect on the sleeve joint and will not look good. The angle of the sleeve will also differ from the angle of the shoulder. Have a look at a few examples of faulty sleeve joint. Similarly, if we have the armhole width, and we have to find out what sleeve width will fit in that armhole perfectly, the same can be calculated as well. We know the half chest width that is equal to 29 cm. We know the half shoulder width that is 22.25 cm. We know the shoulder drop that is 4.9 cm. We know the armhole and that is 25 cm. And we know the half neck width and the is 8.75 cm. If we look at the illustration, we know the difference between half chest and half shoulder and that is 6.5 centimeters. The armhole depth will be equal to the square root of the square of the armhole that is 25 minus the square of the difference between half chest and half shoulder that is 6.5. This will be equal to 24.14 or 24.1. The point from HPS where the sleeve joins the main body will be 24.1 plus 4.9 which equals 29. The distance between A and F which is equal to AE plus EF is equal to 29. EF equals half chest, half neck width. Multiplied with tan value of 20 degrees which is equal to 0 0.36397. Half chest minus half neck width equals 29.875 equals 20.25. 20.25 multiplied with 0 0.36397 equals 7.37 or 7.4. Therefore AE equals 29 to 7.4 equals 21.6. AD equals AE multiplied with his value of 20 degrees which is 0 0.939693. So AD that is the sleeve width equals 21.6 multiplied with 0 0.939693 and is equal to 20.290 or 20.3. The ideal sleeve width value for an armhole that measures 25 with all given measurements will be 20.3. Today's discussion concludes with the finding that the customers, designers, and size fit technicians must note that Whereas one can increase or grade the arm width, the chest width, the shoulder width, and the neck width, as per their wish, the armhole measurement shall be calculated carefully, and it does not need rocket science. Simple Excel sheet can be created to do the job. We must understand that there is no way arm width and the armhole can be graded by 1 cm per size. The arm width can be graded, but not the armhole width. So please calculate the armhole length. In a sweater, we can still stitch the arm in a bigger or a smaller armhole. But can we do the same in a woven garment? Just as a good, sturdy, and reliable building cannot be built on a faulty building plan or floor plan. And, a machine or a machine part cannot be developed without a perfect drawing. A flatbed knitted fully fashioned garment too needs the same kind of precise preparation. 
just because the flatbed knitted fabric compensates most of our faults in patterning. Does it mean that we don't need to look seriously into the making of specification sheets and write down the required measurements with a scientific approach? My humble request to designers, fit technicians, and buying merchants is that you spend so much of your time on writing the spec sheets for your products. Please spend five minutes extra and do check if the measurements provided complement each other or not. All you need is to make a simple Excel sheet which will show if there is a deviation in the two measurements. Please note that out of the two measurements, the arm width and the arm hole length. The arm width is a measurement that is independent of other measurements. Whereas the armhole measurement depends on five different measurements. These measurements are the chest width, the shoulder width, the shoulder drop, the arm width, and the neck width. Any change in any of these measurements will alter the value of the armhole for sure. You don't agree? I give you one simple example to put my point across. If we have the shoulder measurement same as chest measurement or more, no matter what the other measurements are, of shoulder slope or neck width, the armhole measurement must be equal to the arm width. It cannot be more or less than that. And, the armhole size will increase with the increase of difference between chest width and, shoulder width. Or decrease with the decrease when the difference between the chest and the shoulder measurement. Dear friends, till now we have only discussed the measurements and their relationship with each other. We are yet to discuss how to calculate the exact sleeve cap and the sleeve top that is required to make the sleeve fit. In the arm so created by joining the front and the back, we need to calculate precisely these two profiles so created by the front and the back and by the sleeve cap and its width on the top. Without knowing this we will still be shooting in the dark. The procedure to calculate these shall be explained in my forthcoming videos. The calculations of making a perfect joint of the front, the back, and the sleeve needs perfect calculations without simplifying the procedure. And, we need to understand how flatbed knitted garment behaves with and without narrowing marks, as well as before and after washing. Or in other words, when the fabric is unrelaxed and relaxed. Those who wish to learn the procedure of how to make these calculations that will perfectly join the front, the back, and the sleeve are requested to send me an email at purisk51 at gmail.com and please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you like my videos then please share these with all your friends and colleagues. Technicians Programmers Product Developers Designers And Companies interested To get the measurements of their proto samples right In the first go Can also try my software for knitting data calculations The calculations used are accurate, and, you can easily make a garment, with not only the right specs, but, a garment that looks good, and, fits even better, elevating the image of the wearer. To obtain a copy please do contact me at, email, purisk51 at gmail, dot com, or on my mobile number, country code 91, number, 8146400900 If you have liked this video please don't forget to click the like button and if you have found it this video useful please share this video as much as you can with your friends and colleagues if you have not yet subscribed to this channel please do not forget to subscribe to the channel by subscribing the channel you will automatically get notification of the next uploaded videos Thanks for watching. For more detailed information, you may go through my book on fully fashion sweater manufacturing. 
A Guide to Fully Fashion Sweater Manufacturing Published by Woodhead Publishing India Private Limited The book is available in leading bookstores in almost all countries around the world. It is also available on Amazon. Throughout the series, your valued suggestions, as well as questions, will be welcome, and I shall be too glad to answer all your queries. You can contact me by email PURISK51 at gmail.com or on my mobile number. Country code 91, number 81464009000.